it's Chris from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop, and together we've been doing quilting through the seasons. And this quilt is really coming together beautifully, is it not? The final touch on this is to actually add the borders. And for some, that can be a little intimidating, especially for those of you who are doing background quilting. So in today's video, I'm going to talk you through how do we add on borders and how do we do so with the help of background quilting. It really is very simple. Your background quilting will come together seamlessly. All of your designs will line up and it's going to have a beautiful finished product. Now, once we add the borders on, we're ready to go ahead and just bring that whole quilt top all together. And then the fun part really comes with all the embellishments, which we'll add in on a later show that we are doing live and all the details are going to come out real soon. So let's go ahead and start with the background quilting and doing it with the borders, shall we? So if you're following along with me in your instruction book, I want you to turn to page 52 in the instructions. Let's take a look. What it has here is it says that optional quilting designs are sold separately at Kimberbell.com, so that's important to remember. And this Background quilting is what you'll do for all of your filler blocks. So you'll see a list of all the filler blocks right here. Uh, so for example, you're going to use KDQ 292 border floral three, one by 10 design. That's for, when we talk about uh, these filler blocks, I'm referring to the one right up here above to everything there is a season that has different background quilting. That's number one, number two, same thing, number three and four, five. So all of these are called filler blocks and you're going to do the same technique as you will when it comes to doing background quilting, same as the borders, okay? So make sure you do that. Here are the different suggestions that they recommend that you can see here. Uh, but as long as you have any kind of background quilting design that has these sizes, you could really mix and match and use what you would like as well, but these are the ones that are highly suggested. Now, the one that I'm going to be using in today's video is the floral border, and I'm going to be pulling up the two inch width. So we'll talk about that here in just a minute, and that is what is going to do all four borders around the out, outer edge, okay? Then we just sew it all together. So what do we need to do in order to do this? Well. There are some separate instructions found for being able to do these borders. And you're gonna find that file on your CD and that has to do with the floral border 282. So let me set this one aside. And what I've done here is I have already printed that out. So again, this is going to be found on a separate file on your CD. You'll see here that it has lots of different sizes included the 1 by 7, 1 by 10, 1 by 12, 1 by 14. Those are going on your filler blocks as well as, you know, some of these others. But let's talk for a moment about these different sizes. So on this particular border, I'm going to be pulling up the 2 inch size because my finished border will end up being 2 inches. We cut it at 3 as outlined in the in the diagram, the cutting diagram. We cut it out at three inches originally. We then trim it up to two and a half inches because that is what is going to then go into our quilt, which will then end up finishing at two inches, okay? So three inch, they give us a little bit more wiggle room on that. We square it up, trim it up to two and a half. When it goes in the quilt, it ends up being at two. So that's why we are choosing the two inch size. Now, what does the second number mean? Well, a two by seven is going to fit into your five by seven hoop. For those of you with larger hoops, let's say you have a nine and a half by 14 inch hoop, you could use the two by 14 inch. And the nice thing is, is that you have less hoopings. So no matter what size hoop you have, whether you have the five by seven or a larger one, six by 10, eight by 12, these are gonna be able to fit in according to how big your hoop is, 
Okay. Now in today's video, I'm going to do it in the five by seven hoop. So I'm going to be pulling up the two by seven design just so that you can see in increments how these, uh, these borders come together. Now, another thing to point out is on page seven found in those extra instructions. If we take a closer look here, this is the border and sashing information chart. So this is very helpful when I'm going to try and figure out how much do I have to cut my batting, right? And what kind of an embroidery field am I playing with? And what is the file name I pull up? So what I want to point out here is that I'm going to use a five by seven hoop size, all right? This one right here is going to fit the five by seven because it's less than five and less than seven here. I couldn't go up to this one with a five by seven because yes, it's less than five, but no, it's not less than seven. All right, you have 9.32. So what hoop size am I gonna have to use for this one? I'm gonna have to use a six by 10 hoop. All right, so this is how you know which hoop size according to which file name, and so forth. So because I know that my finished, completely finished border is going to measure two inches, I'm going to pull up the two by seven inch file onto my machine. The embroidery field, again, is going to fit my five by seven hoop. So refer to this diagram if you're trying to decide which hoop size, what file name you need to pull up. Now let's take a look at some further instructions here. Again, this is all outlined step-by-step step on how this is done, but I promise watching today's video is really gonna help you visually see what's happening. But basically what happens is just like all of our other blocks, we have a placement line that is going around where the batting is going to go. We put the batting down, we put then the, uh, the fabric down and then we stitch out the, the design. It's really, really quite simple. Here it explains again a little bit more about the border width, which I had just uh, talked about. This has to do if you have repeat files on this design, we don't have to worry about that. So only if you're doing something that geometrically has to fit into the other, that's when you worry about that one. Now, it does suggest that you put fusible backing onto the back of this, which I certainly could. This is going to be my fabric right here. And I could do that. I actually prefer not to add in the step of fusible backing. Again, it's totally up to you. I use the help of a little bit of Tyrell Magic. I put it in my spray bottle here. And I like to just spray it, which I'll show you that step here in just a moment. You could spray it with the Tyrell Magic or you could also use the, the fusible backing on here. Either one will work, but this is kind of an optional thing. It definitely does give added structure and it helps reduce puckering. Our project batting is what we'll place over top. We're going to hoop light mesh cutaway stabilizer inside the hoop, it's, and that is what I have done right there. Again, step by step, the instructions are the same no matter what border you're doing. So. Actually, what you're going to see pictured here is a completely different quilt. So don't be too alarmed when you see houses and you're looking for florals, right? It's the same steps, same techniques. And then if you go to page eight, this is where it really takes us step by step. It's wonderful. Step one, we're hooping the stabilizer only. Step two, we're stitching out the black batting placement line and so forth. So this is where I'm going to take you through. This is the first hooping. Then we have a little bit different instructions for the additional hoopings. The reason why we say additional hoopings is because obviously I'm going to have, if my quilt was uh, 20 inches by 60 inches, I, my first border along the side is gonna be 60 inches long. Well, that's not gonna get me 60 inches, right? In this hoop, in fact, I don't know of any, any hoop that's gonna get you 60 inches, obviously, right? So that's why we have to do multi-hooping and it's actually really simple to do. So they take us step by step through it. So let's go back to page eight again. And you're, you'll see here that, again, this was the first hooping, but the additional hoopings is where I take you step by step on how to continue that process of getting the border on. 
And then that's basically it. There's some frequently asked questions here in the back. I'm going to go ahead and set all of my papers aside with the exception of steps or uh, sheets eight and nine because those are the ones I'm going to refer to the most often. All right, so again, we could put fusible backing on the back of this. I'm choosing not to. On this one, I'm going to spray Terial Magic. Let's go over to the ironing station. So I've brought my designs up onto my machine, as you can see here, and I have the 2x7, 2x10, 12, and 14 designs here. Because I'm using my 5x7 hoop, I am going to select the 2x7 design file right here. And hit set and embroidery. The first step that's going to take place is the placement outline to place my batting and place my batting over top. And now I'll trim my batting close to the stitch line. Now I'm gonna take it back to the machine. It's gonna do a placement outline for where to place my background fabric. I'm gonna pull this out of the machine because I want you to take special note of something here. Now, if you've done background quilting with us before, you recognize that something is a little bit different. We don't have an outline of, uh, across the bottom or across the top as we do on these seam allowances to the sides. And there's a really good reason for that, and that is because we actually are going to be doing in our second hooping, we'll be able to butt up the batting and uh, the design right up to this one right here. And so if you're a little alarmed because you don't see that outer edge on the top and bottom, that is the reason why. So at this point, I'll go ahead and place my fabric over top, and then it's just going to stitch a line along both sides. Again, it's not gonna stitch along the top and the bottom because we don't want a line stitched horizontally across right in the middle of our border. I'm also going to take a small piece of Kimberbell tape and just roll it over. And I'm going to place one at the very top of my design, just outside that stitch line. And I'm going to do another one along the bottom. Again, this is just going to hold my fabric in place. So it's not on the batting itself, it's actually uh, stuck directly to the stabilizer. I also want to start my border about a half inch above that placement line and making sure that my fabric goes over top of this edge placement lines. So I'm sticking my fabric here with the tape and I do it once more right underneath with the tape. And I'm just gonna place my hand right underneath again just to add a little bit extra pressure right there. Okay, so again, what's gonna happen is it's going to stitch the tack down stitches on both sides. Perfect. Now let's take a look at the machine once more, and you're going to see up here that the floral is the next uh, design. So it's the last step in this process, so I definitely wanna be thinking about how do I want my background quilting to look? Do I want it to just kind of you know, uh, melt into the fabric, if you will, or do I want it to really stand out? On this particular one, I think I'm going to, my personal preference is going to go with a lighter color. I'm gonna switch out my thread color right now and change it out for a cream color. I want it to just kind of be a little more subtle and not try and fight with the plaid of the fabric. But again, it's totally a personal preference. Do you hear that sound? We're finished. Well, kind of. <laughs> We're finished with the first hooping, and now it's time to do the additional hoopings. So let's go ahead, pull it out of the machine, and I'm gonna show you how to move on to that next step. Join me on page nine as we take a look at the additional hooping instructions. And again, this is found on a separate file, okay? So I wanna make sure that everyone knows it's not in your book. This is a separate file that is found in your background quilting designs. 
I am now onto additional hooping. So it tells me that I'm going to first remove the project from the hoop. So what I had just stitched out is now gonna be removed from the hoop. Now, if you have a larger hoop size, you might be able to get away with adding a couple of different strips at the same time and be able to do that, which is kind of a, a handy little thing. And you would just combine your designs either on your machine or on your software, either one. But for today's video, I'm just keeping it all as one hooping. And I am going to trim this stabilizer to be even with my fabric. Make sure that you're not cutting any of the fabric or any of the batting or just working with the stabilizer only and trimming that up to be nice and even. Let's take a closer look 